Welcome back. Great to see you all. Um, just, I want to say a couple of quick things and then uh, there's, there's a plan for, uh, uh, for the hour here. Um, but I don't, want, I don't want to stand in the way of it. Um, bef before, though, uh, we begin, um, I do want to take just a moment to reflect on uh, two um, losses that our community um, suffered since uh, the time most of you left. Um, you probably know that the president of the university, Donald Farish, died suddenly um, this summer. Uh, and your uh, classmate, uh, Roy Jan, um, died in, in May, uh, just after exams. Um, I know that I sent you an email. Um, the family ended up not having uh, any kind of public um, memorial service. We would have let you know about that, and you didn't hear back from us because, um, because everything they did was private and we wanted to. Uh, of course, uh, honor their wishes, but um, I think it would be appropriate for us to just take a moment of silence here to uh, honor uh, President Farish and, and, and Roy. Thank you. Um, so, uh, on a happier note, um, we will be celebrating our 25th anniversary this year, uh, and we've got a few events uh, that I hope will be um, exciting uh, for you. Uh, some of them are events that we have at the law school with some frequency, but they are nevertheless um, exciting. One thing uh, that's happening this year that hasn't happened in a long time uh, is that we've um, We've got two new uh, faculty members teaching uh, in uh, doctrinal classrooms. Uh, some of you already have uh, C.J. Ryan, uh, who is teaching uh, wills and trusts uh, this semester, uh, and uh, statistics for lawyers to some of you. Uh, and Tara Allen, a longtime adjunct, has joined the faculty uh, and is teaching uh, crim law to the first years uh, and evidence to uh, to half of the 2L class, so we're really excited um, to have them. Uh, just as a heads up, uh, October looks to be um, a busy month. Uh, on the second, the First Circuit will be hearing live argument here in this room, uh, and you'll get more details uh, about that soon, which cases they're going to be uh, hearing. I've already had um, some communication from an alum uh, who was involved uh, in one of the cases that the First Circuit is hearing he, uh, here at the law school. So it'll be a panel of three uh, from the circuit. We'll for sure include uh, Judge Selya, and if passed as prologue, probably the chief judge uh, of the First Circuit, uh, and uh, Judge Thompson, who's uh, the other sort of Rhode Islander uh, on the circuit. Uh, on October 4th, we're having a, a blowout women in robes event bigger than usual. Uh, you'll hear some more details about that. I hope that uh, you can join us. And on the 24th, uh, up in um, Providence as well, um, the Supreme Court uh, of Rhode Island will be hearing the finals of the uh, Esther Clark Moot Court competition. So good luck to those of you who are uh, involved in that. Um, the only other thing I want to tell you is that if you are interested in providing some input to the search firm uh, that is heading up uh, the search for uh, um, our, uh, our presidential vacancy, um, there'll be some emails coming out about listening sessions that, um, uh, that they will be holding. Uh, most are being held in the law school, uh, so it'll be very easy for you to um, uh, to, to attend one of those and, and speak to them if you would like to do that. So without further ado, um, we are moving on to Academic Affairs Matters, and that means Associate Dean Hassel. Let me tell you something about Associate Dean Hassel. This is the last one of these that she's going to do. Um, and I think I can say with confidence, ever. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so I'm sure this is going to be a bittersweet uh, moment for her. If, if tears well up in her eyes, you'll understand what's happening. So, yeah. 
Uh, Dean Hassel. Thanks. So as, as Michael alluded to, I'm going to step down from this uh, position in, in January and return to being a full-time member of the faculty. And Jared Goldstein will be taking my place. And we'll be down there on the first floor uh, helping you all with any academic matters that come up. So this morning, I just wanted to point out a few rules of the road that you want to just make sure you're, you're aware of as you move into your second and third years. You should definitely have picked up a new copy of the um, student handbook, which, which includes the academic code. There were some uh, modifications over, the year, over this past summer, not anything too substantial, but you want to make sure you're working with the most, the most recent uh, version. So two important things, or a couple of important things that I think you should refer to and make sure you're on track with. The first one is uh, the graduation requirements, which is section 703, which is on page 49. So don't just rely on uh, the registrar or the dean of students or me to tell you, like, wait a minute, you haven't done everything you need to do uh, to graduate. And you certainly don't want to be running around uh, at, the, uh, at the end of your third year trying to figure things out. So this lays out all the, all the graduation requirements, the required courses, the experiential education requirement, which is six credits of experiential education. The, uh, write, the graduation writing requirement, the pro bono experiential learning requirement, which you'll hear more about in a minute. So just take a minute uh, when you have a chance and check through, see where you are, see if, that you've, you're on track to finish these things, and that you have a plan for finishing uh, your graduation writing requirement, getting your pro bono hours in, whatever needs to be done. Um, the other piece of the academic code, or it's not really part of the academic code, but it's the ad addendum, is the honor code. Uh, hopefully, none of this will involve you, but it's best to sort of get an idea of what's prohibited and what your obligations are under the honor code, so you're prepared if, if any situation arises. If you find yourself in a situation where you, you're about to do something and you're not sure if it's okay, stop and ask someone, either your professor or me or someone, you don't want to inadvertently get yourself tangled up in any honor code uh, violations. The other thing I wanted to uh, mention to you was the character and fitness portion of your application for law school, which I'm sure is long lost in your memory, contained an obligation to uh, update as time went on. So if anything has happened since you filled out that application, that needs to be added, you have an obligation to do that in a timely manner. And the reason for doing this, or one of the main reasons for doing this, is because these same questions will be asked of you in your bar application. And if you tell the, the, the bar examiners about something that you never told us, that will raise a question for them of your candor. Because one of the things they will be getting with your bar application is a copy of your law school application. So I just want to remind you the kinds of things that have to be reported are sanctions by any educational institution in the past, or of course, Roger Williams, uh, any criminal matters, uh, well, specifically, any felony charges, they don't have to be convictions, any misdemeanor convictions over the past five years, and any pending charges. And regardless of whether something happened uh, when you were a minor and it was expunged, it still needs to be uh, disclosed to us. Because the bar application will also ask you for things regardless of whether they've been expunged. The other thing you need to tell us is if there's been any uh, suspension, discharge, or asked to resign from any employment. And have you been subject to any professional discipline? Have you accused of fraud or misrepresentation? And if you're a member of the armed forces, have you been, uh, have any charges or proceedings been brought against you? So take some time to think, certainly has anything in any of these categories happened since you did your application? Also, now's the time to think again, is, was there something you probably should have put in your application and you didn't? Now's the time to amend it and make sure every, all your ducks are in a row and all of our information is consistent with what you will be sending the bar so there'll be no uh, problems there. If you have any questions about whether something should or should not be uh, disclosed, just uh, send me an email and I'm happy to talk to you about it. So keep a copy of your academic code. Most of the answers are in there. 
But if you can't find the answers, I'm happy to, to help you out, at least until January. Um, next, you're going to hear about the pro bono learning requirement from Susie Harrington Steppen. On a lighter note, thank you, Diana. Um, many of you have already fulfilled the 50 hour graduation requirement, but for those of you who haven't, especially the three L's, three ways to do it, okay? The pro bono collaborative, we're recruiting now, those are our sort of in house pro bono projects. They're flexible. You usually need to do that work over the course of two semesters. Really great for students who are, who are very busy. Again, if you want to join a pro bono collaborative project, you need to do it in the next two weeks. There's emails going out for recruitment, and I'll be in my office most days and down in the bistro next week um, recruiting for those projects. The second way is alternative spring break. Many of you have done alternative spring break. It's great for 3Ls who are looking for a way to do all 50 hours in a limited amount of time. You spend your spring break doing um, pro bono in the field. There's a, a reflective journal component, but we can get you all 50 hours in one week. So great option for those of you who tend to sort of wait to the last minute. The third is to either use an internship, either something you did this past summer, if it was with a government organization, a nonprofit, um, or you can plan an internship for your fall or spring semester that will qualify. We have about 45 local organizations that are pre-approved, but if there's something you want to do that's not on that list, that's not a problem, stop by my office and get pre-approval. Okay, so PBC, Pro Bono Collaborative, ASB, and then find something on your own that sort of looks like an internship. How do you actually get certified? There are forms. Again, many of you, over 100 of you, 100 of you in the room now have done the, the forms that are required, so ask your friends. They're on our website. It's very simple to get certified. There's a new process for 1Ls. Please do not get confused. They're going to be reporting hours through a new online system. You all continue to report through the paper forms. Sorry, but the technology isn't quite there yet for your class. Um, for those of you who are considering sitting for the New York bar exam, New York has a separate pro bono requirement. It's different than our requirement, and there's a special New York affidavit you need to fulfill. We have information on our, on our website about the New York requirement, or you can stop by, but just make sure you remember they're different. Certain things qualify for New York that don't qualify for the law school and vice versa. Um, we cannot match 3Ls with a pro bono opportunity in the spring of your third year. Every year I have a few students who come in and they, and they sort of look at me like, what can you do for me? I can help you now, I'm happy to help each of you find something that makes sense, but please don't wait until the spring of your third year. We do not match students with opportunities. We provide many, but you need to choose what makes sense for you. And lastly, every student that does 100 hours or more of pro bono is recognized in the commencement program, so stay tuned if you're a 3L in the spring, usually around March. We send an email out asking you to self-report everything over 50 hours. Okay, stop by my office if you got any, have any questions about the requirement. Thanks. And Andy's gonna speak about the clinical programs. Sorry, Andy. That's quite all right. Uh, so hi, I'm Andy Horwitz. I'm the Assistant Dean for Experiential Education. So my uh, few minutes here is to just alert you to and get you thinking about the variety of clinical and externship experiences that are part of our curriculum. So uh, we have application periods for the clinics and externships in the fall and in the spring. So for those of you who are 2Ls, you want to make sure you're paying particular attention to the spring application period that will come, you know, two semesters for, or a semester and a half from now. Um, because that's the period of time when you will be applying for clinics and externships in either semester of your third year. What's happening in the fall application period that's coming is applications only for this coming spring. So for the three L's, there are spots available in most, but not all, of our clinics and externships. Some of them are actually full from the application period we held last spring. So uh, in particular for the two L's, as you think ahead about planning, and you should be thinking about planning right now, you want to begin to sort of map the contours of your remaining two years or year and a half after this semester. You can take a clinic and an externship, usually in different semesters. You can take two externships. You can take an externship that is a semester in practice, where the only class you're taking that semester is your full-time externship and the seminar component that goes along with it. I'm not going to spend the time now to go through the different programs, 
They're described on our website, but perhaps more importantly, we hold an information session every semester. This semester's information session is September 12th, which is a Wednesday at noon. If you are thinking about or have any interest in applying for any of the clinics or externships, you ought to come to that information session, uh, and that's where you'll get good and full information about the process. Outside of that, uh, you ought to be thinking about getting some individual counseling if you're a little bit confused or concerned or have questions or are up in the air about what experience might work best for you or what combination might work best for you educationally. Counseling for those who are interested in the public interest kind of aspects of the externship, you'll find in the Feinstein Center. They're very happy to meet with students individually and begin to talk to you and counsel you through your choices there. For those who are more interested in the business kind of end of experiential education, we have a startup business clinic and we have a corporate counsel externship program that are particularly well designed for the students with those interests. David Gibbs, who's the director of our Corporate Counsel Externship Program, is the person to see, to schedule an appointment with for counseling about how you might map your curriculum and your studies around those particular interests. Um, so September 12th at noon, come to the information session, pay attention to emails about the application period that's coming this fall, and in particular for 2Ls, pay real attention to the application period and the information session that are going to come in the spring because that's when you have the opportunity to try and plan out the entirety of your third year. Um, the one experiential ed program that doesn't quite fall under my umbrella, uh, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Reed Porter who's going to talk for a minute about the Sea Grant Law Fellowship Program. Thanks, Andy. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Reed Porter from the Marina Ferris Institute. And uh, for those that don't know, I run the Sea Grant Law Fellow Program. Um, that program has, conveniently enough, a deadline today. If you're interested <laughs> in participating during the fall semester, um, applications are each semester three times a year, so fall, spring, and summer. Um, there's an application period at the beginning of each semester for that semester. So the application period is different from the other clinics and externships. Um, to, to apply, it's, it's basic um, information like you would apply to any other law job. Um, you can come contact me if you have any questions about that. Um, we do uh, pay uh, students for participating or not this semester, but in future semesters, um, you can get credit um, for the externship uh, credit that you need to graduate or for, uh, in some cases, for the graduation writing requirement. So keep that in mind. You do not need to be a maritime or a marine affairs student, groupie, to uh, apply. Um, you are allowed to, to come and see me even if you want to do something else. And a lot of our, our projects are focused on uh, business law or other aspects of um, law that you wouldn't necessarily think of as marine affairs. Um, I can give you a quick rundown of what uh, projects are available uh, that I'll be hiring for after today. Um, one is about organic standards for, for, for seafood, so that's a, a business labeling issue and marketing. Um, takings, so anybody that's interested in property law, um, takings uh, related to uh, energy facilities. Um, there's a local land use and uh, permitting issue about oyster aquaculture and uh, siting of aquaculture facilities. And um, finally, there's an international law uh, project that's focused on marine spatial planning laws for small island developing states. So um, a really a nice variety of projects, and um, I do encourage all of you that, that are interested in any of those to, to, to send me an application. Um, you work on, on these projects under my guidance, so it's a little bit different from an externship, but they are real-world projects for outside organizations. So we are we are working uh, with outsiders um, regularly, and so you can develop um, interviewing skills, you can develop your your legal writing skills and presentation skills as well. So uh, again, any questions, come see me. I'm here all all afternoon over in the Marine Affairs office, and uh, the next person is Veronica. 
Welcome back. It's great to see so many of you here. And I know you've all been all over the place uh, this summer. We always love to hear how your experiences went. Uh, but the first person I want to introduce you to is Chris Gerlica. So he's a new legal career counselor in the office. Uh, as many of you know, Tiffany had a baby last year and decided to stay home with her baby. So now we've got Chris on board with us. And he is seeing people quite a bit now. So feel free to set an appointment directly with Chris. He's one of our graduates from the class of 2012. Uh, he was very involved while he was in law school, doing a number of different internships, a number of student leadership positions. He was a seasonal recruiter for the admissions office, uh, so he was on the road for the law school recruiting classes a few years ahead of you, and has had his own practice now for a number of years. So we're very excited to have him on board, so uh, feel free to stop by, say hello, and um, introduce yourself, and also feel free to tell us how your summers went, because we love to hear uh, those updates. Which leads to my next point, which is updating your resume. So I know a number of you are already working on that, but the sooner you can do it, the better, just because we don't want you to wait until a deadline is uh, hovering over you. Uh, so so that you have the time to actually make sure it's the best possible representation of what you have done, especially if you have had an experience this summer, if you now have leadership positions here at the law school, or if you're doing something this semester. Uh, another component we want to make sure is that uh, we can see you all. So we're doing resume walk-in days, um, typically the first week of every month. So we have our first one this coming Tuesday, 9 until 4. You don't need an appointment. Just come in with your materials. But we ask that you make a good effort ahead of time. Um, so what you bring to us is something we know has already been looked at and updated, and then we can take it from that point. So. Um, so I encourage you to update your resumes earlier the better, and uh, there will be deadlines, as you'll hear, as you've already heard, <laughs> um, that will come up quickly. So we encourage you to do that. So now I want to talk about just hiring timelines, so I'm going to address the third year students first. So right now, a lot of you are freaking out about you're graduating in May and you don't have a job yet, um, so I want to make sure you understand what the hiring timeline looks like for graduating students. So deadlines that are happening right now for third year students are typically judicial clerkships. So you've seen some of those come up over the summer. There will be a deadline in October for Rhode Island for the law clerk department here. Um, and we have that all outlined on simplicity, uh, but also federal government. So if you're thinking about working for a federal government agency, those deadlines happen very early. The Department of Justice, which has one of the highest, uh, the, one of the largest hiring programs for entry level attorneys, their deadline is next week. So we want to make sure that you are aware of those early deadlines. The Arizona Handbook is on simplicity. That is a great compilation of all the deadlines of all the programs that are available to law students in their third year. So make sure you take a look at that. Uh, the other thing is a federal resume can and should be different than your regular resume. So we want to make sure that you know that. It, there's no page limit, so it's actually a lot easier to write than your traditional resume, which is only typically one or two pages. So make sure you work with one of us if federal government is what you want to do to, uh, to work on that federal resume. So again, we're looking for as many keywords as we can get uh, to make you appealing to a federal agency. Uh, the uh, Presidential Management Fellows Program is also another very popular program for graduating law students. It's a two-year program. We've had students uh, secure PMFs, is what they're called, every year. The, the application process is typically open for one to two weeks. So I will send out an email as soon as that's open in October. And again, the turnaround is very quickly, but it's a great program that we've had a lot of success in. So take a look when you see those emails come out. So. That handles the early deadlines, and then other employers, if it's, not a if it's not a federal agency, if it's not a judge, is typically going to wait until you have bar results. The exception being, you know, if you were with a firm this summer and they loved the work you did and they wanted to give you an offer, or if you're working with an employer throughout your third year and they are very happy with you and give you an offer ahead of time. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind, that this is a job search that's going to keep going. That doesn't mean if there are no deadlines now that you should not be looking. Um, so certainly set up a time to talk with one of us to figure out what the best strategy is for each individual out there, okay? Um, so now for second year law students, so you've already seen a number of deadlines have passed for resume collections and on-campus interviews. Those are going to continue to happen. So I even just got an email this morning about another firm that wants to come on campus. So make sure you check your emails very often. Um, another reason why we want to have make sure your materials are up to date now. Uh, so that's going to happen throughout the third year. Um, I also want to make sure you know that um, there are also deadlines for 2Ls uh, for federal agencies, so the same thing applies uh, for what I had just said previously. There's a different federal resume, uh, so make sure you work with one of us for that. So, so take a look at that, um, but you will be applying pretty much for your second summer throughout the entire year, too. So it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, so, um, so we're, we're, we're right there running alongside with you. Um, we do a lot of mock interviews. I just did one this morning, so if you are getting interviews and you are nervous about your interview skills, please schedule a time to do a mock interview with us um, so that you can, again, 
again, uh, be your best presentation uh, when you're in uh, the interview with an employer. So uh, this is a shout out to all the student groups. We love to co-sponsor events with you. So I've already spoken with a number of you, but if that's something you'd like to do, make sure you approach us and let us know. If we can do something this fall or this spring, uh, we'd love to, to tag along with you guys and make it the best possible event. Or if you're looking for speakers, we're happy to give suggestions. Um, Equal Justice Works, that is if you're a public interest-minded law student and you're thinking about going to a national career fair, Equal Justice Works is absolutely worth your time and effort. Uh, we have students that get hired every single year through this career fair, it's nationwide. So um, for the third years that are thinking about doing public defense, most agencies are going to be there hiring through that program. So uh, definitely take a look at that. The deadline for that is September 14th. So Loxley um, uh, is gonna come up and talk to you for a moment about the American Bar Association. So membership is free to all law students and we strongly encourage you to become a member. He will go through all the reasons why. Uh, but it's also something that it just gives you access to resources, to listservs, to job postings, uh, to events. Um, so it's certainly worth your time. So your colleague here, Loxley Bryan, will talk a moment about that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Loxley Bryan. I am your ABA representative. Uh, the ABA is a national organization which has over 400,000 members, about 10% of that, or 40,000 students. Uh, and like Veronica said, membership is free, but there's also a premium version which offers you a lot of value. It gets you discounts on things such as bar prep materials and uh, your cell phone bill, Sprint as a partner, uh, rental cars. Uh, it also gives you the opportunity to uh, look into national organizations for any interest group you uh, you may have and it, there's also opportunities for development in your uh, professional uh, development so if you'd like to uh, sign up for the premium version of the ABA it's only $25 and offers you uh, value opportunity and development thank you as always feel free to make an appointment with our office and now I'm going to introduce Kathy Thompson Good afternoon, I wanna welcome you back. It's really nice to see your faces again. Um, I first wanna thank you already for the help that you've provided to the newbies that are in the building. I know that some of you have come back for Jumpstart orientation and I know you're working informally with them because a lot of them had told me they've, you've given them some help already. So thank you for doing that. Um, with respect to what I wanna share with you, look for an administrative announcement from academic success about a course advising information session that we will bring to you before you register for spring classes and we usually come to you so we can capture as many of you as possible and it's usually for about 20 minutes after your con law classes in the meantime if you have any questions um, for your that's for your second years any questions about course advising in addition to all the other people that Dean Horwitz mentioned um, I'm perfectly happy to meet with you, as is our new director of bar support. Um, she's been here for a year, um, Professor Brittany Raposa. Um, the main purpose of my being here today is to give you a chance to hear from Professor Raposa and to introduce her, um, and also to let you hear from someone you know well, um, most of you, Dr. Kishba, who's our professor of writing. <laughs> and our newly appointed Associate Director of Academic Success. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about um, Professor Raposa. She, for your two L's, may or may not have met, met her, had a chance to meet her, um, but you're in for a real treat. She graduated number one in her law school class. Um, she received either a perfect or near perfect score on the bar exam. Um, she after eight months was voted staff member of the year by the um, three L's who were leaving last year and most recently was um, awarded rising lawyer by the Massachusetts Bar um, uh, Association for her pro bono work. Um, she's an excellent resource for all of our students um, in a lot of different ways, um, but particularly for um, learning how to take the bar and pass it on your first time and resource for preparing for your applications for the bar exam for different states. So I'm gonna let you hear from her in a moment. But before that, I, I guess I have to turn the mic over to Professor Kishba.
Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you. I'm excited about this year because it's my third year, so I finally know everyone in the building. Uh, and while you will all always be number one in my heart, you are no longer number one on my priority list. <laughs> there are 170 new 1Ls, and I need to help those little ducklings hatch. Um, <laughs> I am still here to help you. If you are an LP3, if you are taking a directed research, if you have a writing requirement, or you're working on a writing sample, I am certainly still here to help you, but I recommend, as always, that you figure out what your deadlines are and you book with me well in advance of them. Um, some of you have tried to get in already this week, and I am both solid already. Um, if you want to make an appointment, this is the same spiel. Send me a couple days and a couple times on those days when you are available, and I will reply with a proposed meeting time. The more availability you propose, the better chance we'll have of getting you in. Um, meeting with me, the earlier, the better. Um, if I can help you in those initial outlining stages and we can work through this thing together, the more useful I will be. If you have a finished product and you bring that to me to look over, I will help you, but I'm limited to helping you with surface elements like grammar, punctuation, spelling, and that's about it. Um, I am also, because in, in order to try and reach more students at all together and at one time this semester, I am trying to schedule some weekly workshops on Monday and Wednesdays. I'm waiting for room confirmations at the moment. But uh, for an hour on Mondays and Wednesdays, pretty much for the entire semester, I will take a room, I will lecture on a different writing topic for about 20 minutes to a half hour, and then I'll leave the second half hour for specific or general questions about writing. You can bring your work with you if you want me to look over something. If you haven't been able to get a one-on-one -on -one meeting or you just have a simple, quick question, I will be available for those. Um, I'm also teaching a night class, which you are now eligible to take which will go over all manner of grammar, punctuation, and writing for a professional audience. Um, if you have any questions or I can ever be of help, let me know and uh, stop by sometime. Just say hi. Good luck, guys. And girls. <laughs> I'm too short for him, so. Um, so I'm Brittany Raposa, the director of Bar Support. Um, so. Third years are typically my priority. Second years are like half. Um, and so um, one thing that I am offering to second years this semester is a course called Legal Reasoning with Evidence. So you're all eligible to take that class. What it does is I'm going to teach legal analysis in writing and thinking with multiple choice questions while you're simultaneously enrolled in evidence now. So if you didn't do as well as you wanted to in your first year, it's a good opportunity to build your skills, not only to do better in evidence or in your other law school courses, but also to increase your success of first time bar passage. Um, before you get to your third year. So that class, I believe, still has open slots from when I checked this morning. So if you're interested, you would enroll in it as you would any other course. It's under the legal seminar um, portion of the registration. So it starts on September 13th. It is only six weeks, and it meets on Thursday at 510. And then for third years, I teach ALR. I have 128 of you this semester in ALR, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, it meets for both semesters, both fall and spring, one and a half credits each. And so we've already gotten started for this semester. Um, if you are not enrolled in ALR, I think today's ad drop. If you still want to get in, I think that you can. Um, but if not, then you're missing the party that we have once a week this semester. <laughs> and so um, if you're sitting for the February 2019 bar exam, if you're in this room and taking that bar, it's a good time to start looking at deadlines. Um, some are coming up. If you're taking a July bar exam, you still want to know when the deadlines are because certain states are coming up pretty soon. North Carolina is already January, for example. So you just want to make sure that you have uh, everything kind of lined up so you're not missing any deadlines. You don't want to 
sit and want to sit in a jurisdiction and are not able to because you missed a particular deadline. So just keep aware of that. For those of you also taking February 2019, or those of you who want just an early bar preparation type of start, I do offer some supplemental bar review classes that you can take simultaneously with your commercial bar preparation course. So I offer Kickstart to Bar Review, and it's starting at the end of this October, and I teach tailored to the bar, um, secure transactions, wills and trusts, family law, conflict of law, um, and all of the essay tested subjects that are on the bar exam before you graduate. And then after you graduate, so in January, begin supplemental bar review, which is once or twice a week. I work on building skills and I give the students studying for the bar extra simulated practice. So you will be seeing emails from me about all of that stuff um, relatively soon. But Kickstart starts at the end of October and supplemental bar review starts in January. It is tailored to the February 2019 bar, but anyone is welcome to attend the sessions. And so February of 2019 is the first time Rhode Island is administering the UBE. So that's just kind of a bar exam update. And so they will now be administering it for the next exam and moving forward. Um, something else you should be thinking about is the MPRE. If you haven't taken it yet you, and you already took PR, you might want to think about taking it. The November, there's an exam in November and that deadline is coming up in a couple of weeks. If you took the August MPRE exam, the scores are being released on September 6th, so hopefully that you all passed and don't have to worry about taking it again. And then you will have to um, consider getting a commercial bar preparation course in order to study for the bar exam. So when you're downstairs, you'll be seeing tables out and you'll be seeing Kaplan, Barbary, and Themis. Um, I want to make sure, it's one of my goals this year to make sure everyone gets a bar course that's best tailored to them and that will work best for them. So I'm having a commercial bar preparation course meeting on Wednesday, September 12th. It was at noon, but it's now moved to one o'clock because there was a conflict and it's in room 262. Um, I strongly recommend all third years attend that meeting, especially if you don't know which bar course to take. If you're a second year uh, and you are interested in going, you absolutely can, um, but it's mainly tailored to the third year law students. I'll likely have a session again when you are third years. And then just lastly, I'm re it's mandatory that each third year bef before the end of the semester meet with me to discuss their plans for the bar. And so I did give the students in ALR the opportunity to pick first slot. Um, and so that is over and then I will be emailing all of the third years by the end of this week to pick a meeting time with me so we can discuss your plans for the bar exam. But other than that, um, my door is always open if you need anything bar related, non-bar related. Um, so I will see you all this week later on. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. Um, for those of you who might not remember me, as I'm often hidden, my name is Raquel Ortiz. I'm the Dean for the Library and Information Services. I wanted to give you some updates of what's new in the library uh, since you left us in May, and some information about uh, support in Providence and our research and instructional programs. So both of our computer classrooms are now updated. They both have task chairs that you can adjust as you're working in there. Um, there will be a teaching computer that will be added to the smaller classroom sometime this fall. For those of you who are fans of our scanner or who were fans and then got turned off by the fact that it turned off all the time, um, the scanner has been fixed. We had an update done this summer, and that update also brought us a new app that you can use. Um, you download the app to your mobile device and then you can import anything that you scan into your mobile device. Now, who cares, right? Well, two good things that this app does. First good thing, for those of you who like to listen to learn, it uh, converts the documents that you have scanned into audio files so you can read and listen at the same time or if you're driving or you're at the gym, you can have your phone with your headphones and listen to whatever you have scanned. If you want to learn more about this app and see a demo of how it works, you can talk to Lucinda Harrison Cox or come to me. We both have sample documents to show you how this thing works. Um, another change over the summer is that we now have single sign-on for digital resources. 
What that means is that you no longer need your ID if you're off campus and you need to access something other than Bloomberg Law, Lexis, or Westlaw. It uses the single sign-on that you use to access the RW portal. So that should make things a little bit easier. The last new thing, coming soon, we're going to make available research appointments for all students. This will be a way for you to uh, contact a librarian in a pool of four research librarians to request some extended help with research questions, blue booking questions, et cetera. Um, we'll send out an announcement when that system is up. In terms of Providence support, um, starting next week, I will be available in, Pro in the Providence offices every Tuesday uh, or most Tuesdays in the semester by appointment. So um, all you have to do is contact me for now until the research appointments open up, and then you can uh, schedule some time to meet with me to discuss any research questions you may have. Uh, the last piece I wanted to mention are our research and instructional programs. Um, one very exciting piece of news is that we're now a West Practice Ready School. And this program provides a range of tools that will be of interest to you, but I wanted to mention three of them in particular. The first one is the ProView eBooks collection, which consists of electronic books for the majority of the West titles that we have in our library. Not the study aids, which are part of the West Academic Study Aids package, but everything else West publishes. The second item is something of interest for transactional, um, or, excuse me, not for transactional, for anybody who's working on briefs this semester um, or next semester. It's called Drafting Assistant. It side checks a brief. It will build a table of authorities for you and will check the quotes that are in your brief for accuracy in case you wrote the quote incorrectly. And the last piece that I wanted to highlight is Practical Law and Practical Law Connect, and that is a task-based tool for those of you who are doing transactional work. Um, an announcement or a reminder, Research Fest is on today until 3 p.m. You can stop by to learn about our digital resources other than Lexis and Westlaw. You can also enter to win prizes by completing three or more short demos. And if you want to look at any of the practice-ready tools in action, you can look at that. Um, Please be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Um, we put a lot of information out there for you, including research databases, programs, services, hours, etc. And last but not least, remember that the Ask a Librarian service is available to all of you. You can always stop by the library, of course, but you can also chat with us, send us an email, um, book research appointments when those are available, at, et cetera, so that you can work with one of our research librarians for any questions you might have. And finally, don't forget that you can always reach out directly to me with any questions, comments, concerns, or even jokes, anything about the library at all, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Next, uh, Tina Bacon from the Office of Financial Aid will be speaking with you. Hello. Um, I'm one of the assistant directors of financial aid along with Kate Politano. Um, I wanted to let you guys all know that if you have any questions about your health insurance fees and how to include it in your cost of attendance, come by the office. Um, for three L's, I wanted to let you know that um, you can borrow federal loans for two uh, bar application fees. So once you're ready to apply for the, um, the bar for two different states, you can come by our office to borrow additional loans to cover that. Also for 3Ls, um, the bar study loans after you graduate must come from a private student lender. So you no longer can borrow from federal loans for the, after you graduate for bar study. We do have a recommended lenders um, list in our office, so you can come by and pick that up. Now for outside scholarships, um, they are posted on Simplicity as soon as I receive them. So you can check that for any outside scholarships. Um, you did pick up a flyer um, for the MAX program from Access Lux is now available for two L's. And you will receive an email from us next week um, how to enroll. You will also be receiving an email once we set the dates for two of the um, sessions that will be happening this fall. For three L's, there will be an exit counseling by them in the spring semester. And again, um, if you can't meet that, you can make individual appointments with me or Kate. And our door is always open, so you can always feel free to come in if you have any financial aid questions or loan questions. And next up is um, Dean Lally. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone, for your full attention. I'm the last one, and we're almost done. I just have some quick things. Um, so as you came in, there's a handout on our sexual assault um, program. And this is just a reminder that I'm the Title IX coordinator. Um, so if anyone is affected or the victim of any sexual-based misconduct, harassment, um, please come and see me. Um, my job is to make sure that I'm providing that resource to all law students in conjunction with Jen Stanley, who's a Title IX coordinator um, for the law school. Um, I also want to remind um, students that um, even if you didn't apply for academic accommodations for a documented disability as a first or second year student, that that door has not closed. So if you have any questions about academic accommodations, either for a learning difference, psychiatric, um, concern or even a physical disability, please um, come and speak to me. For third years especially, as you're thinking, as you're prepping for the bar, we do have third year students who might not need academic accommodations within law school, but might need to apply for accommodations um, for the bar exam. And so this comes up sometimes um, for temporary um, conditions or sometimes physical disabilities where you might not need something for an exam that's three hours, but when you're looking forward to sitting for an exam that's all day, that's six hours, you might need some accommodations and Sometimes it's helpful to have that documented within the school. So if you have questions about that, particularly for the bar exam, you can speak to me or to Professor Raposa. Um, I realize today is Wednesday and Jill, my assistant, is out, so we didn't send administrative announcements, but I do want to just give a reminder that um, we do try to consolidate a lot of announcements and information from different offices into the weekly administrative announcements. So it's easy to delete, but that means you've missed all of the information that's in the email. Um, so email is considered the official communication channel for the law school, so we know that you get a lot of emails, especially with bridges and everything, but please make sure that you're reviewing those emails. When there's something urgent or requires action, I try to put that right in the heading so you know that it's something either important or urgent or I need action. Um, and then the last announcement is just that, just a reminder, today is the last day of ad drop. If a class has not begun yet, that you can continue to add or drop that until the class begins, and you can do that either through my RWU or um, if you need assistance, the Office of Student Finance and Records are not here, but you, everyone knows where they are and they're happy to help you. So just make sure that everyone who's here has signed up and make sure you pick up the handouts. They'll be available in the library, and thank you and welcome back. <laughs>